Hello and welcome to True Crime Mysteries. Um, I want to apologize for my lack of videos in the last couple weeks and also my voice. I have the flu and I feel terrible still, um, but I have my voice back um, so I'm able to do some recording for you guys. <laughs> Thank you for your patience and um, I'm glad to, to be able to speak again. Anyway. Um, I thought we would do something a little bit different, and I wanted to explore the origins of the term John and Jane Doe. Um, we hear these a lot in um, crime context as well as legal proceedings, and you know, I personally didn't know why we use the term, so I thought I would do some research, and I found out it's a very common question. So I thought I would do a little little fact video about it. So we refer to John and Jane Doe when we don't know a person's identity. And if you stick around to the end, there's a little bit of a giveaway announcement. So let's get into it. In 13th century England, we began seeing John Doe in legal documents, as well as other fictitious names such as Richard Rowe, John Noakes, John Stiles, kind of etc. The tradition has been rooted in Roman customs, um, and they had also used fictitious parties in lawsuits. The surnames are associated with deer, a doe is a female deer, and a roe is a European deer species. The first name John and Richard were the most common first names, and the term Jane Doe is much newer than the male counterparts. Um, for much of history, unknown women were simply listed as unknown or were withheld for certain reasons. The English initially used the terms in land title disputes. This was established for landowners to solidify their ownership on certain lands. If there was any doubt as to who had a right to hold their land, instead of waiting for an actual person to sue them, they would sue themselves using a fictitious defendant. The lawsuit would set legal precedent as to who had the rights to the land and that land's boundaries. It was called the action of ejectment. This particular term was made obsolete in England by 1852 with the introduction of the Common Law Procedure Act, but it remained on within the legal system. We still use the term today, so why did it stick around? In the 19th century, John Doe became a symbol of the ubiquitous ordinary man. You began to see it pop up in books, films, advertisements, as well as continuing to be used in legal documents. In cases of unidentified bodies being called John and Jane Doe's, this is an act that gives an identity to a person whose identity is unknown. In regards to crimes, it can humanize a traumatic scenario to remind people that although their identity is unknown, they still deserve justice and respect. Fun fact, there are people with the legal name John and Jane Doe. In 2009, the New York Times reported the difficulties and unwanted attention experienced by a man named John Doe. He has an extremely difficult time traveling, applying for jobs and housing, as most people assume he's using a pseudonym. If you had this name, would you change it? That is all I could find on the origins of this commonly used term. I didn't know why we called unidentified persons John Doe, so hopefully, like me, you learned something new. And if you like this type of content, give it a like so it lets me know if I should make more. I have a new video coming out later this week, so hit that subscribe button for more true crime content. Now on to the giveaway. If you are a subscriber and comment on this video, you will be entered to win a $10 Amazon gift card. I will make an announcement on the winner for the next video. Thank you for watching, and I appreciate your support. Stay safe, and bye!